Hey guys, welcome to another discussion today, and this is something that a few people have asked me for, and I've tried to cover a lot of different things in terms of, you know, what to expect and what to do when you come to release a game before you release a game and things like that. So this one today is going to be discussing what do actually customers want when you release a game on the PC especially, and what's the best ways to maybe increase the popularity and the revenue based on the things that they want and the things that you can add in especially when you release something like Steam. So I'm going to give you some examples of my game Left Alone and the things that you know I incorporated from the beginning, some things that I didn't know and some things that I added as I went along. You can see the sort of configuration page which you can either disable when you build out in Unity which a lot of other game engines don't actually have. If you don't use this, you would have to integrate it into, you know, a system that you've got within your actual game in pause and in your menus to be able to remap your controls if you choose to do that. And in here, there's an input tab and you can actually choose to change the actual primary and secondary values based on it. And if you are using the input manager from the Unity itself, um, you will have to make sure that you don't specify a key, you specify a value which can be remapped in this here. And you can get other solutions of different input managers which uh, might be able to give you some helping hands with creating something in an, the actual game. But the first one that I'd like to mention, just as I said, is being able to remap your keys, because not everybody uses a conventional WASD and things like that. Some people use the arrow keys and things like that, and that was one that was suggested to me, and people wanted to be able to do it, so I made sure that I didn't hard code in any buttons, say like, you know, interact with E or move with WASD. Don't hard code them in, because if people want to change them, they'll be more inclined to purchase and carry on and be happy about the purchase that they made with your game. So I'm just going to load up my game and just go through some other instances of things that people like and want to be able to do, is that if we say we take this options menu, forgive the sort of quality, I mean I wasn't very good at doing UIs and things and it was made in Unity 4.3 and I still don't really like it but you know it is what it is. People like the ability to be able to change your mouse sensitivity on the fly, have a volume slider, be able to change brightness, have the, especially the ability to invert your mouse controls because not everybody uses the um, conventional, you know, up is up and down is down, they'll use it the opposite way if you were playing like a flight simulator or something, that's quite popular. So you need something which just inverts the mouse control and it's fairly simple to do but it's something widely requested and I didn't have it in at the start because I didn't even know it was a big thing and after releasing yeah people do want it and especially people who maybe don't have a mouse which you can change the DPI on the fly they want to be able to change the mouse sensitivity if you've adjusted something um, in the engine and you thought off oh, your mouse your mouse sensitivity is okay when somebody else uses it it might be really ridiculously fast so you want a slide to be able to control the um, actual sensitivity now another good one is the brightness because Unity doesn't necessarily have a brightness feature in it. It's sort of like maybe correcting the gamma with a, an image effect or I think in my game I, I corrected the actual ambient light which is in the scene which you could do in the render settings and then you can't really see it in this scene because it's mostly baked out but it gets a little bit brighter as I slide up. Um, the regular stuff like the quality settings for people with a lot more different so you, you cater for you know as many different computer hardwares as possible so you cater for the lowest end machine that you possibly can with the lowest graphics and I'll give you an example so I, I stick to low you can see that the lighting's mainly baked out so uh, you know it's passable even on the lowest graphics even though pretty much a lot of the effects are turned off and if I take it back to ultra you can see quality improve and there's two things really with the resolution you want to be able to cater for you know the resolutions that are there usually in a lot of instances when you um, add the resolution features it will automatically find the different resolutions that somebody's monitor can actually reach like mine can go the highest of 2560 by 1440 and then the usual the most common one is 920 by 1080 and you might go all the way up to 4k in some instances now it's not always it's always good to be able to test your game on as many different resolutions as possible so if you've got the the actual ability to look at a 4k monitor or you've got one and you can test your game on that that's great because then you can check all your UIs you can check all the scaling you can check that your assets look okay different things like that because as soon as you start moving resolution 
especially in this version of Unity when I made this game. The resolution was tricky because the UI, the UIs didn't scale as easily in uh, Unity 4 as they do in 5 because they just updated the whole UI system because it was all really janky and really old fashioned back in back in the past and it, you had to write some additional code to make sure it scaled between resolutions so sometimes if you went from 1080 to um, 2k your UIs would be here instead of in the corner but you shouldn't have as many problems but it's good to check another one is some people will have ultra wide screens and I know I'm saying that <laughs> it's trying to cater for as many people as possible now if you've got an ultra wide monitor that's great or some you know somebody who has to test your game to see how it looks but sometimes you will have the black banding at either side if you know you've not built the game out to an ultra wide resolution um, you can look into that and, and try and adjust it if you if you feel that that's going to be the issue but there's not as many people that are going to be with the ultra wide as as they are with just normal um, set widescreen resolution so like I said with the uh, fact of the resolutions just check all your UIs and make sure it scales up depending on if, if the resolution goes lower than 1080 higher than 1080 and, you know try your best to have a look make sure the UIs all scale up nicely and don't sort of impede people's view depending on what resolution you choose um, in the game because that can be a big factor and sort of ruin the experience if you're not careful. A lot of people like to be able to um, actually save on the fly so you are regular save points um, in this game it didn't have particular regular save points and you know a lot of people didn't really like that they didn't really enjoy the fact that the save points were sort of few and far between in some instances so it's good to either have an option where you can save at any point or have regular times where because a lot of people don't have a great deal of time and if you've got a good space of like half an hour to an hour between save points it's dependent on the game if it's more of an adventure one like say this is which is an experience you want to maybe keep your save points every 10 20 you know minutes like that of you know set gameplay let's say a big one as well that people always asked was for controller support and i tried to add a controller spot originally to this but it was just really awkward because unity fire was already out at the time when i was sort of you know toward the mid end of this actual game and controller spot was just dodgy and I, you know i just thought it wasn't worth putting in but with if you get yourself your own custom input manager from ones that are from the asset store you can pretty much set everything up and your controller will work pretty much any controller you've got it could be a playstation xbox anything and they'll work you'll plug them in and off you go and it will work with your mouse and keyboard it'll switch to the controller once it's plugged in and you'll be re it's really easy and people like that because it's a lot more easier for people just to pick up the game if they're not inclined to use a mouse and keyboard and will just drive more you know, expectation and competition to your game because the more options you have the actual better it's going to be another one is steam trading cards and achievements even though um, you know your game has to go on steam in this case but trading cards you have to reach a certain value of sales before you can put them in but there used to be a good way to you know get people be interested in your game if they wanted to do the trading card system steam achievements is there from the get-go so that's a good one to put in because just like with places like xbox and playstation where you go for a trophy and achievements similar with steam people just like that sort of thing people like being able to achieve something or get 100% completion on games sometimes maybe find a mid balance don't make your um, achievements ridiculously hard um, you know have a good selection and people really enjoy and it can often add replay value to a game if say you've got one achievement which is complete the game and then you know replay it a certain way and you'll get the different one and I mean that adds replay value to the overall you know value of the game and one last thing I'm can I'm gonna care to mention is um, this is not all the set points that of all the things to remember but it's about having different languages now I didn't have different languages other than English in this game but it was asked yeah you know again and again most people when they're looking for games the vast majority of your custom will actually come from say you know solidly in America and I mean if you add all of Europe together including the sort of UK and maybe Russia they might eventually almost equate to the value of sales that you will get in the US 
but your US is usually the biggest market of people who buy your game. So predominantly, they will be English speaking. So that is your first port of call. And if English isn't your native language, as people suspect, good to have English as a first port of call. Then maybe take a look at different languages you can possibly put in. So I think the second most in my stats, I can't really show you because I'm not sure if I'm allowed because of the NDAs and things like that. UK isn't far behind that, but again, that's English speaking. Uh, Germany's quite close behind that. And then there's other European countries which are not as important. Russia is close to there. And then there's some sort of parts of Asia which you know, will be interested in your game. But it depends. You know, if you know some people that can translate your game for you, that's great. That'd be fantastic. And that will just drive more sales your way because the more people. The more features you have, the more languages you have, the more support you have with the most common languages, the better. So it's really up to you to decide which features you think that you can easily implement. The more you have, like I say, the better it will be in the end. But these were just some key points to take a look at and think about, and then you can go from there. So hopefully this gave you some ideas of what you can do. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.